yesterday exposed CBS was trending. And if you don't know who Project Virtus is, well, I'm about to tell you right now by pulling up this information from the Wikipedia page of Project Virtus, which says, Project Virtus is an American right-wing activist group. The group uses disguises and hidden cameras to uncover supposed liberal bias and corruption. The group is known for producing deceptively edited videos about media organizations and left-leaning groups in a 2018 book on prominent Propaganda and disinformation in U.S. politics. Three Harvard University scholars refer to Project Virtus as a right-wing disinformation outfit. And that's what they are. And apparently, they have footage of CBS uh, staging... This whole thing with their story that was aired last Friday. Now, from what I can assure you, that CBS had nothing to do with that. And this is where I'm going to have to read some tweets here. Uh -huh. Remember when the guys behind exposed CBS Project Virtus completely botched their attempt to sting the Washington Post in an attempt to give credibility to Senate candidate Roy Moore. Yeah, that Roy Moore. And that's who Project Virtus endorses. J-Dub tweets to Peter, which says, Peter, most people dislike being lied to, no matter who it is doing the lying. We have a media credibility problem that will be addressed at some point. We're all sick of it, and we're collectively aware of how sketchy our mass media companies are. Change is coming. And he quote tweets by saying, You know, J-Dub, you bring up a great point. Project Virtus has, Project Virtus has lied repeatedly, and they have a huge credibility problem. People should be upset about them lying even more. Hopefully change will come soon and none of us will have to hear from them ever again. Matt Hamilton tweets to Peter saying, I agree, we should turn the tables and get the truth out there. Expose, hashtag expose Virtus. Daniel says they've been sued countless times and won each of them. Don't hate because the mainstream media is getting exposed all the time. And the left by Project Virtus. People are actually coming to them because they are fed up of all the lies as well. Just appreciate it and welcome it. Then Shilvers tweeted this out to this person which, which says that's just completely untrue. Which reads in a screenshot says in January 2010, James O'Keefe and three associates were arrested by federal authorities in the course of posting, posing as telephone workers in a, in an attempt to execute a phone tampering sting in U.S. Senator Mary Landrieu's New Orleans office. Though the four men were initially, were initially facing felony charges, each pleaded guilty to a misdemeanor charge of entering a building of under forced pretenses. The three associates, Jan Stan Dye, Joseph Bale, and Robert Flanagan, were each sentenced to two years of probation, a fine of $1,500 and 75 hours of community service. As the group's leader, O'Keefe was sentenced to three years of probation, a fine of $1,500 and 100 hours of community service. This guy tweets, they've been sued countless times and won each of them. 
I guess you can see in recent months to Big Daddy O13, which continues on by saying no how he didn't give any citations. O'Keefe is just another money grabbing grifter in a never ending line of conservative con carnival barkers. So you think CPS did not tell people to pad the line and the nurses and workers are the ones lying? What are you claiming? You're just bitching and showing your TDS. Now is a direct reply to AZ Stud Digital, Stu Digital, which, who said, When you think everyone is lying to you, everyone is persecuting you, everyone is spearing against you, only one person slash group has the truth, then you're probably in a cult. Ross Reagan continues the conversation, what, am I claiming and believe CBS is lying and staged fake news? Why? Because there is a video showing CBS lying and staging fake news. If you have evidence contrary to this, I generally would love to see it. I want truth, not an agenda. Yeah, I don't think Project Vertus has the agenda to present real news. Countdown tweeted, Last time I checked, consistent with innocent until proven guilty, used heavily by maggots to push Kavanaugh's confirmation. The accusers have to provide the proof. Very hard to prove it didn't happen, but maggots don't know this. No wonder Trump loves the poorly educated. Ross tweets again, the proof is that they have them on video stating it is fake news. What more could you want? Yeah, just like we have Dr. Blasey Ford and at least two others stating Kappa Nope had tried to rape them. What a proof do we need? Huh? No, just because people state it, it's fake news doesn't make it so. It needs to be corroborated. Just like maggots insisting Kappa Nope's rape allegations needed proof and Moscow Mitch Treason knew FBI could prove it, so stopped it investigation and ran to confirmation through Trump is a murderer. Ross Reagan then tweets out a video that is filled with lies. It's about James O'Keefe exposing CBS News and Cherry Health, Michigan for staging this event, which is completely false. Countdown tweets to Roz, yes, I've seen this garbage, and that includes O'Keefe himself. Crap journalism at its finest. Huge chunk in check. Something he has owned to be a fine art. Too bad most people don't care. Must be horrible to crave that much attention like it's for the orange horrible. I have a video here that I screenshotted from Project Virtus and I am going to expose the living hell of Project Virtus by the clip that they have provided on Twitter. You're telling me you're a hundred percent certain that CBS News, CBS News Corporation, National, staged a fake event. They faked the news. They faked the reality and broadcasted that to all of their audience last Friday on CBS This Morning. hundred percent, absolutely. Only six states have reported more cases than Michigan, but fewer than two percent of its people have been tested for the virus. 
In our series on the state of coronavirus testing, Adriana Diaz shows how Michigan is trying to improve a system that has failed some of its people. But the governor says testing above all else will help determine when to fully reopen. Apparently, the news crew wanted more people in the line. Well, we knew they, they were coming. We had no clue that we were going to have to, like, do face patients. Did she tell you guys, like, hey, you're not actually getting tested? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, she did. She just said this. Well, just to make it look busy, putting meals because they're right there. That's crazy. So I didn't see you guys had to do the swab at all. I just saw you talking to them. And then I was talking with the other girl. Okay. Is this the the fake line? Yes, yep, that's it. So, so the people on the cars are are not patients. Majority of them, I do know, um, from talking with the testers, that that one one of them, one or two of them, uh, were real patients, which added to their frustration because this line sat there for a while, uh, so they could organize the shot. Except the fact that. CBS did not hire any actors to organize the shot. CBS did not have did not hired people who did that. So for Project Virtus to say that CBS staged the event about giving actual proof of who was actually there kind of shows how much of fraud Project Virtus is because they claimed that they have an insider who is telling the truth but in fact he is not. There was nobody hired by CBS News to fake stage an event for their coronavirus series. There was nothing like that. Nothing like that at, at all. So they they made a, a a line of cars with 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 medical personnel on the cars as opposed to patients. Correct. And the viewer does not know that. Correct. You shouldn't be afraid to say the truth, um, because in the end, you know, the truth always wins. He's right. The truth always wins, which is why I do not believe that CBS staged the event. Therefore, Project Virtus was the only people there finding their own actors so that they can do a story to expose CBS falsely. I have another video from Project Virtus to show you how falsely they claimed that CBS faked everything when they didn't. Just received an email that occurred between the CEO of the hospital in Michigan and CBS News. This is an email that Project Veritas has obtained. Here it is. It's between Tasha Blackman and Adriana Diaz at CBS News. And in this email, uh, the CEO of the hospital was sent last night. The CEO says, quote, I am learning that some of our staff may have been hanging around near the testing tent and some even may have pulled their cars up to get in the video and or make it look busier. I am sure many staff were anxious to show you, CBS, just how busy things can get sometimes. I do not believe that your team captured any of this and it was obviously not part of your story. So there is the admission from the CEO of the hospital that doesn't exist in the statement they gave us on the record. They did not say this uh, to us on the record. There seems to be some contradictions occurring here, and uh, we've obtained this email. So, stories developing. If you know anything, please send us a tip at veritastips at protonmail.com. This is a big story. We need to hold these people accountable. Yes, we do need to hold Project Veritas accountable because... Again, that's not me, me, the issue of what they are saying. 
what they're saying is contrary this contrary to the same thing that they already gave a statement about CBS News did not stage anything at the Cherry Health facility. Any suggestion to the contrary is 100% false. These allegations were deeply are deeply disturbing. We reached out to Cherry Health to address them immediately. They informed us for the first time that one of their staff, chief officers told us at least one staffer to get in the testing line along with real patients. No one from CBS News had any knowledge of this prior to tonight. They also said that their actions did not prevent any real patients from being tested. We take the accuracy of reporting very seriously. Statement from Cherry Health says, Let me be clear, we are not aware of CBS staging anything as part of their visit to our site. Blackman said, I have never spoken with the president of CBS or any other CBS executive. Blackman was outside during the... Filming for an interview with CBS News reporter Adriana Diaz. I did see the line of cars in the video that you shared with me. I can assure you that I did not instruct any staff to get in their cars and line up. And I have no idea when it was filmed or who was in each car, she said. We served 34 patients with COVID-19 tests on day CBS visits, she said. Cherry Health provides care for over 70,000 patients spread across seven countries. Our patients are the underserved. In the most cases, we are the only option for quality health care in the communities we serve. So there's a statement from Cherry Health. Project Virtus, on the other hand, did not actually provide proof that CBS staged it because only they were there and I, from what I can tell only, they were the ones, Project Virtus, who hired actors to create a story for Project Virtus to expose wrongfully to CBS News. And for Project Virtus to do that says so much about them. It clearly says so much about them. Project Virtus is very, very inaccurate of their stories. When they don't have actual proof, it goes to show how much of the scumbags they are, including James O'Keefe. In October 2016, Robert Kramer and his organization Democracy Partners were Project Virtus's targets in its YouTube video series Rigging the Election. Over the course of months, correspondence and meetings, Project Prospective donor Charles Ralph aka Dan Sandy asked Kramer if there were there was any work or internships available for his niece, Angela Bennett. The alleged niece was really Allison Mass, a PP operative who previously infiltrated Democratic campaigns. During her internship, Mass secretly video recorded her conversations with Creamer and others in the office. In rigging the election, these recordings were edited in a manner that implied Creamer and Democracy Partners were a part of a scheme to help the DNC incite violence at Trump events and engage in proto fraud to help Hillary Clinton win the presidency. On June 1, 2017, Democracy Partners filed suit alleging breach of fiduciary to see duty violation of federal and state wire tap laws, trespass, fraudulent misinformation, and civil conspiracy. Subsequently, subsequently O'Keefe and Project Virtus filed a motion to dismiss, arguing, among other things, that they were journalists 
whose conduct was protected under the First Amendment on September 15, 2017, the Democracy Partners filed in opposition to O'Keefe's motion to dismiss. In January of 2018, the judge ruled against Patrick Virtue's motion to dismiss on all counts. This case has moved past discovery. On March 31, 2020, U.S. District Judge Ellen Holmville denied Virtus's motion for summary judgment on three claims. Fraudulent misrepresentation, wiretapping, and civil conspiracy. The case will move to trial. And that'll be it. I will link Project Virta's exposed website below. So by the time you've seen this, go check the description already.